Okay, let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer, and then we'll begin. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for who you are and what you've done for us. I pray for your grace and for your guidance now. Give us the strength to do your will. We pray that we would serve you faithfully and that you'd give us understanding. Bless this time, and may we do um, all that you yes, call us to do, and that we'd be yes. transformed in our hearts, that we'd apply things, truths to our uh, our head, and we'd also work with our hands. In Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things. Amen. We, we made the decision to go ahead and start. There were several more chapters in the operations manual, but it's just really uh, peripheral stuff. It's not really important. And so uh, we made the executive decision this morning to go ahead and start the courses. Okay, so we're going to be working through uh, Christianity 101. It's the first class of 18 courses. You can audit or you can take the, the course for credit. Audit means you can participate, you can do the homework, you can attend the classes but nothing is required, okay? It's all optional. You, you're pretty much just a participant, just a, like a spectator, okay? If you take it for credit, you'll, do, you'll, you'll attend the classes either live or you can watch them delayed. So you have two options. You can watch the class live, we'll record the class, and then you can watch it delayed on YouTube, okay? So if you take it for credit, you're supposed to watch the classes, you're supposed to do the homework, and then you're also put, supposed to uh, attend the, uh, the small group discussion that, that will be uh, supported by your local pastor or leader, okay? So those are the two options. So we're starting the first course, Christianity 101, and chapter number one, a word to be experienced. The learning approach for I-Team is threefold, okay? It's threefold. Number one, we have... So number one, we have this, uh, this, this head component of the, of the curriculum, and that's knowledge. So we want, we want you to, to learn some things. The way you'll, you'll learn these things is through the lecture, which we're having on Wednesday night, and then also doing the homework. And then the last part will be having a group discussion in your local setting. Now, in some cases, you might not need to have the group session, okay? If it's just you're by yourself if there's no one around you. But if you're connected with Lord's Harvest, you're with Pastor June, maybe eventually Pastor Jerry, if, if you have one or two others, you can facilitate the group session, okay? But that's not, that's not required. I mean, the main thing is the lecture and the homework, okay? The group session is really to answer questions, to work through, to work through, the, to work through the homework, okay? If there's a question, all right? Secondly, there's this a heart component to what we're doing. So it's not just knowledge. We're just not learning to, to gain knowledge. We're also looking to put that knowledge into practice. And so the first way we put it into practice is in our heart, okay? So a lot of times we, we forget about our heart and we try to put it into practice in the ministry. Or we, and a lot of times in ministry, you can have a burnout, you can fall into serious sin because you're, you're maybe putting stuff into your head, maybe you're using your hands, but you've forgotten about your heart. You're not caring for your heart, okay? So after you learn the knowledge, whatever you're learning, we, we have to focus on our hearts, okay? Our heart is so important, all right? So there'll be a time that part of this learning is to apply the knowledge gained. So we, we say, uh, in the Christian life or personally. I like in the Christian life because it's really bringing us, bringing out the Christ-likeness. Christian literally means Christ-like. Christ follower. So some people don't like the word Christian. They say it's too basic or too generic. What does it mean? Well, when you look at that, when you, you see Christ, and so I actually think it's a great, uh, if we understand what it means, it's a great description for who we are. We are Christians. We're Christ followers, Christ disciples. Um, and then number three, hands. Applying, there's a typo there. Sorry for the typo. Applying the knowledge gained in the life of the church. Okay, and so now we're applying uh, after we're experiencing the heart and in our own lives, practicing. Now we're going to, to use our gifts. We're going to minister. We're going to serve. We're going to take the knowledge and serve in the context of the church. Okay, so there's three different areas. As we go through this, uh, this, these courses, always be thinking head, heart, hands. Now, the way that we're going to really make sure, at least as you go through the curriculum, that you're working with all three is that for me, I'll be focused on making sure that you're gaining the head knowledge, but concerning the heart and hands, we're going to have a, a bi-monthly 
mentor, mentee, or discipler, disciplee uh, report. It's going to be generic, but it's going to ask, how are you, how are you, how are you applying the knowledge in your heart, and how are you applying the knowledge in the church, okay? So it's just a, a report of accountability, so, so you'll simply uh, fill out a report. There'll be some basic questions. It's one page. It's not meant to be a big deal, but it's just to make sure that as you move through the course, your, your heart and your hands are not being lost in the head, <laughs> okay? So what we'll do is you'll have the, the homework assignments, the lectures, the group meetings, and then also this mentor-mentee report, and that'll be filled out every, every two months as long as you're going through the curriculum. And by the time you're finished, you'll receive, if you're taking this for credit, you'll receive a certificate in uh, ministry certificate. And for those who want to move on to being ordained or, or licensed, we will help you with that in your local church. Okay. So, so um, this is really the, 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 the full, they say the, the, the big shebang. It's, it's what you need. Okay. Uh, moving on here, so the format of the course, we'll have, uh, as I said before, uh, group sessions, homework, and then group meetings to discuss with a local leader. And then the fourth component would be the reports, which you're actually uh, um, doing, you're, 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 applying, you're applying these things in your, your personal life and then also in, in the life of the church. And then lastly, as we move on here, so... We're going to go ahead and begin chapter one. Everyone should have a copy of Christianity 101. If you don't have a copy of the PDF, let me know and I'll repost it on the group page and then you can just download it from the group, from the group page. Okay, so everyone should have Christianity 101. It, it, it's already there in the file on the group page, but I can repost that. Okay, and so we're looking at chapter number one. Now, I'm not going to actually go through chapter one. Uh, through that, through chapter one within the, within the Christianity 101, I will be discussing the same topics, okay? So the goal is I am giving a supplement or complementary information to chapter one, okay? So chapter one will be very similar to what we talked about, but a little bit different, okay? Uh, I'll be focusing primarily in Romans as we work through uh, chapter number one, and then the same content you will see elsewhere in the scripture. So you're really getting you're, you're going to be getting two touches with the same type of content, okay? And the, and the benefit for you is by, by me going through the material, you're going to have a very good understanding before you do the homework. So uh, I would actually recommend if you're doing the homework and if you're going to watch this delayed, to watch the video before you try the homework, <laughs> okay? Um, because the video will really give you good ideas. It'll give you for more information, and then that will allow you to, to springboard into other ideas. Um, I don't want you to be spinning your wheels or spending so much time trying to figure out what's going on. I would rather you watch the, the lecture first, if you're watching it delayed, and then you can do the homework after, okay? So, so that, that would be my recommendation. You don't have to do that. It's really, the key is just doing the homework, all right? Um, okay, so just the, the overview. So the main objective for today, the main objective for today is to be familiar, not to master, to be familiar with the following concepts related to salvation and a passage of scripture for each one. So in chapter number one of the I-Team curriculum, they go through a bunch of topics, a lot of topics, okay, concerning our salvation. And so what I want to do is I want to focus on that in one passage and then uh, give you some, some parallel passages for you to uh, look and study, and then you can you can really examine it more in your own time. So the topics that Christianity 101 have are these: the the concept of salvation, the person of God, this concept of wrath, uh, judgment, conversion, and baptism. Okay, so there's six there's six topics. Now, in relationship to these topics, they also talk about these. So if these are not additional topics that are not discussed, but I'm just going to highlight them because, because, we're, uh, um, because they're so closely interconnected. So they will talk about 
um, confessing Jesus as Lord. They will talk about faith. So the additional topics that we'll be discussing are the gospel, faith, and repentance. And, and those are really connected with with salvation, God, wrath, judgment, conversion, and baptism, okay? We are only, we're going to be looking at one text only, okay? But as we look at this one text, we'll be, I'll be giving parallel passages for you to go, and some of them will be the same as chapter one. So again, there's really overlap between these two, uh, the, the, the lecture and then the homework. It'll, it should be really easy and make sense to you. Lastly, Assignment, assignment. So your first assignment <laughs> is answer all the blanks in chapter one of I-Team Course, Christianity 101, the word experience, oh, a word experience. Okay, so that is your homework for next week. So sometime between Wednesday night of tonight and next week, you should complete these, uh, this assignment. Now, I, I'm, again, I'm not sure how everyone's going to be in, sm in the small groups. I highly recommend if you can meet to discuss as a small group, even one or two, I mean two or three, I would recommend that. It would be much more beneficial for you. You don't have to do that. You can even do it just through the phone. You can just sit there and talk and, and call on the phone, um, but you don't have to. Lastly, prepare any questions for a quick review at the beginning of the next session. So uh, you don't have, this is not required. If you have a question in the homework, this is like mathematics, <laughs> the mathematics class. You, you, ha, you, you, it's a, you, you do the homework and then any questions the next day the teacher will ask, okay? So if you have a question that you want me to discuss or your small group has a question that you want me to discuss or you want us to discuss as a group, prepare it and then next week for 10 minutes we will discuss, we will kind of review and summarize chapter one, okay? So really you should be getting uh, four, Four touches with chapter one. Our lecture, the homework, the group session, and then just a brief review, a brief review next, next week. Uh, they say in order to master a topic, you should have at least 11 interactions with it, okay? So we're only getting four. So uh, that's why the objective is to be familiar and not to be a master of these topics. Okay, all right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into uh, the, the one and only text that we will be studying tonight. We will be going to other passages of scripture for sure, but uh, we're only going to be, this is the primary text that I want us to really understand. And I'm just going to be highlighting different key words and then uh, we'll be going deeper. Okay, so let's, if you have your Bibles, please turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 1 in verses 16 and 17. Romans chapter 1 in verses 16 and 17. What version are you using? I am using ESV. So if you want to, ESV. that's fine. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it... The righteousness of God is revealed from faith, for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. So this is only two verses, but in, in two verses, Paul summarizes salvation, uh, this whole idea of, of uh, salvation and everything related to it. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, let's just look through each component. This is a great, this would be a great blueprint if you're trying to really learn terms to become familiar. This would be a great blueprint if you were to ever have a, a uh, if you were to ever have a passage of scripture that gives you relationships, this is a great blueprint to have. Okay, of course, you're gonna, you, you will have to go to other passages of scripture to to further define gospel, to understand salvation, belief, faith, righteousness of God. But this is a great blueprint by which to go, if you're working through the gospel with someone or salvation with someone, this would be a, a, an excellent blueprint to, uh, to use. So let's just look really quick at verse 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel. 
The first thing I just want to draw, uh, uh, draw your attention to is, of course, the term gospel. I am not going to, because this is the, the foundation for discipleship, number one, mo most if not all of you are here. You're leaders in the church, okay? So, so most of you know these things, okay? So in one sense, I'm speaking to the choir in that you know uh, what we're discussing. And in another sense, maybe some of these things are new to you, okay? So I don't want you to feel like I'm talking down to you. You're like, oh, Tim, I know that. Okay, fair enough. Um, the other thing is, is that this is Discipleship uh, Christianity 101. And so this course, eventually, you could use these, these truths that you we're working through. You could use this as when you're discipling someone else. So I'm just going method, uh, I'm just going systematically. I'm just going step-by-step step working through this passage and my hope would be that maybe you use or you implement some of these some of this uh procedure because it's it's concise it's clear it really bring, brings clarity to what we believe to what has been provided for us uh, to what we are to proclaim okay so what what is this concept of the gospel okay so i'm just going to draw an arrow over here and we're going to unpack when I say gospel, if someone were to ask you on the street, what is the gospel? We should be able to give an answer. We should always be able to give an answer. So uh, just coming over here, the first thing I want to say is the gospel is literally good news. Okay, it's literally good news. Okay. Now, what is the good news in relationship to? What is it about? What is it offering? This passage does not give that. So, of course, we're going to have to go into other passages of Scripture to further identify what does Paul mean when he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. We're going to have to go to another passage to clearly understand what exactly he means. Now, in one level, Paul is going to lay out, we could say the gospel is Romans chapter 1 until Romans chapter 11. Uh, if you study, if we do a book study in Romans, really it's Romans 1 to 11 is a description of what this good news is for us. But there's no way that any one of us can just go through that. It's just so big. We would have, we have classes on that. So what I'm doing is I'm going to give you a precise, the, the most precise text for where the the gospel is defined in scripture. And then I'll give you one other text that's parallel in Romans. And, and that's it. And then we can always study more. There'll be more examples in, in, in I-Team. But at least you have, okay, good news. I know where that text is, okay? And I, or I have two texts, okay? So let's go, let's turn our Bibles. The first text I want us to go to is, uh, if you turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, okay? If you were to say, Tim, where is the clearest definition, the most precise definition of the gospel in the scripture? I would say Corinthians is top five, if not top one, okay? Maybe it's the goat. <laughs> Maybe 1 Corinthians 15 is the goat of defining the gospel, the greatest of all time, the clearest of all time. For those of you who are watching or are hearing about the Jordan series, here we go. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 to 4. Now, I would remind you, brothers, of the good news, which I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. So we're not going to go into all these different things, but... The gospel is what has been preached, what has been received, the thing on which we stand, and the thing by which we are being saved. So, so we've talked about this in previous discussions. The gospel is so much more than just conversion for the believer. Here, it's not just what we receive, it's what we, I'll stand, it's what we stand on, and it's what we are being saved on, okay? what we are being saved by. One big misunderstanding is that we receive the gospel and then, okay, great, let's go find someone to share it with, but we're not actually applying it to our lives. Now, of course, today we're just focusing on conversion 
um, and so we, don't, we can't go into all the other details, but I want to emphasize to you the importance of the gospel being not just for conversion, but also sanctification. You are going to hear me say that until I die, okay? So get used to it. The gospel is not just for our conversion, but also our uh, sanctification, okay? Um, by which you are being saved if you hold fast to the word which I preached to you unless you believed in vain, okay? So not only is it what, what, we, what has been preached, what has been received, I'll just, I'm going to highlight this. It's preached, received, what we stand on, by which we are being saved, and number five, it's what we hold fast to. The, 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 the connection here uh, is unambiguous. Gospel is substituted for the word. So it, you could say literally, if you hold fast to the gospel, I preach to you. Okay? Unless you believed in vain. All right? So that's all I'm going to say there. I just really want to emphasize how important. No doubt we will come back to this text many times in this uh, I-team curriculum and study this passage. But, but then he's going to actually define it. So what is the gospel? For I deliver to you as of for, first importance what I received. What is it that, Christ, that, that Paul received? That Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and then, he, and then he goes on to describe who he appeared to, okay? But if you were to define the gospel, gospel is, gospel is, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. What we're going to see at the end of this study is that, is that this buried in death is also We picture that in baptism, okay? So in your baptism, in, in baptism, we also proclaim the gospel, okay? Let me just stop for a minute. Any questions or comments? So, Steve, can we say gospel has five parts? You could say our response to the gospel has five parts. Let's say that. Because, so this is, this is our response. This is the gospel, okay? So I want to say, this is the gospel, and this is our response, okay? Yeah. Yeah, so you're correct. So yes, there's the, the response to the gospel that we should have is, well, actually it's four, because, because the preaching is what we hear, and then the response would be four. So there's maybe five, um, uh, there's a five-part uh, component, but it would be for receiving, standing, being saved, holding fast. Yeah, we could say there's there's some type of there's five there's five components. Let's say there's five components in res, in response to the gospel. Let's let's say that. That's good, Henry. Yeah. Five components. Someone will preach. Uh, someone has preached. Yes. The receiver, the hearer should receive it. Yes. And the hearer should stand and believe in it and by believing it's the work of god that he is being saved and he should stand firm on that belief yeah and, and he's trusting remember about the foundation henry the foundation we you trust in the foundation so so think about what what you're standing on something you trust in so it, you're, you're trusting in what the gospel offers us. We're going to see that. What does the go gospel offer us? Um, we see that clearly here. Christ died for our sins. This is what the gospel offers to us. Why is that so important? We're going to answer that tonight. Any other great question and clarification, Henry? Any other comments or, or, or questions? Pastor? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, since you are talking about the gospel, now in Romans chapter 1, uh, 
the word gospel was also explained in in verses one yeah. to one. So how is it uh, related to? I mean, in First Corinthians fifteen, three and four, because in, in chapter one, Paul talk begins with the gospel, and then he explained what is the gospel, and it's we can read that one. Did you? Did so you? How is it related? How is it related? Related? Did you steal my notes, Captain? <laughs> I was going there next, so oh. <laughs> stealing my notes. No, 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 no. You know, no, I, I, no I, I studied. I made a study. Great. Uh, this, this afternoon. That's afternoon what, oh my goodness, that's great. Excellent, excellent. So Christ, what we can say here is define the gospel. Christ died. Christ died for our sins. in accordance with the scripture so if you were to say tim what is the gospel he died he was buried he rose again okay so let's just add that i don't want to be i don't want to show a uh, uh, bury uh, raised raised in accordance with the scriptures, okay? This is the gospel. Those components are so important as well. So we want to say Christ died for our sins, he was buried, he was raised again in accordance with the scriptures, okay? Uh, that's how 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4 defines it, okay? Now, we're going to go next. Next is Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, okay? There are many more passages. We do not have time to go. We're just going to these two to give us a good idea of what the gospel is, okay? Let's go now to Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Now listen, okay? Tell me what's similar, what's dissimilar, what's complementary. Maybe it's the same. Maybe it's very close. Paul, a servant of Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So I see something very similar according to the Scriptures. Almost the same. The same. No, no difference. Only different in, in uh, word structure, same meaning, okay? Concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of Holiness by His resurrection from the dead. So we don't have the part of He died for our sins. We have the, we have the end result by His resurrection from the dead. Okay? So what's being highlighted here is this. So we could say, we could say, if we understand uh, here, you would talk about Messiah. This is Messiah. And then here we have Son of God. But what we can say, what we can say is that it's, it's saying the same thing, but it's really accenting his resurrection from the dead. The validation of what he did was validated by God. Okay? And that's good news. It is not good news if Christ dies for our sins and just dies. That's not good news. Um, what this signifies, I, I'm, I'm answering this now for Jerry, is this, this signifies uh, overcoming the curse. If Christ is resurrected from the dead, if it is shown that we are in Christ, if it is shown that we are in union with Christ, if it is shown that we are by faith one with him, what is true of Christ will be true of us. Okay? So in this sense, it is the exact same, different accent. Okay? Different accent. The focus being on this resurrection. Good. Okay, so let's go back. Let's just go back to, to, to our, our content. So here we can say here, uh, 
Christ was revealed to be God's Son in power by his resurrection from the dead. Now, I want to be crystal clear, okay? Many people died and came back to life. Lazarus died and came back to life. Viva? This is something fundamentally different. Hebrews 7 says, he was confirmed to be the high, uh, after the order of Melchizedek, not Melchizedek, when he what when he when a man appeared with indestructible life <laughs> this is the uh when christ is brought back from the dead he is brought back from the dead as the 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 first fruits of the dead the first fruits of the new creation okay this is a this is part of the the incorruptible eternal new man okay this is not just Lazarus coming back from the dead. This is not just Jonah coming back from the dead. This is something fundamentally different. And we know that we know we know we know that this is true. Not that he became the, the text talks about him because some people talk about him becoming the son of God, but here it, he was revealed, he was declared to be. God publicly declared him to be his son, vindicating him by bringing him back from the dead. He's the first man of, son of Adam who overcomes the Adamic curse. Okay? So this is the gospel. If Christ can overcome death, that's good news. <laughs> I don't, I don't, what are the two guarantees in life? Duha lang, biba? Usa. Death. Do ha uh, taxes. <laughs> they say in the US taxes, the money for Uncle Sam, and then death. Jesus overcame death. That is the greatest news. That is the greatest news. So so these are really uh these are complementary. These are complementary. Okay. Justin, um neighbor in and what makes the Jesus declared God's son? Is it merely the by being resurrected or the kind of body resurrection that he has? Compared to Lazarus, he was resurrected, but also he died again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Jesus' resurrection, I think it's different from the body kind of resurrection. But so I'm asking, what makes his him uh, declared son of God? Is it by merely the being resurrected, or he is the first resurrection? So, so he's bo it's, so it's both. It's both. The answer is yes. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what you see here, Jerry, is the, the the Lazarus resurrection is here, right? Lazarus resurrects still according to the flesh. He comes back still according to the flesh, right? But uh, here, there's a break. He was descended from David according to the flesh, declared okay. to be the Son of God in power. So it's both. It's the resurrection, the, the act, okay. and also the new man. <laughs> the super okay. man. <laughs> super man. Um, I think we're losing uh, one break here. I, past, Pastor Noli is trying to get in, but I don't think, uh, I don't think he can. Um, Maybe the internet's not good. So if someone wants to message him and apologize and say that we'll send him the video. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Pastor Noli. Um, good, 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 good. I, I apologize if we're going a little deep. This is very foundational, okay? The big takeaway is that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. He was buried. He rose again. And 
He's declared, he's pub, he has been publicly validated. He has been publicly confirmed to be who he said he is, okay? In this resurrection from the dead in power, all right? And, and that, that is good news for us. Uh, I'm already seeing the fruits of dying, right? We're losing hair. We're old. But it's great news. It's good news if Jesus has resurrected from the dead, okay? That's all I want to say for gospel, okay? So, so um, that's all I have for us. That, that, that's a good start. That's something good that you can use in evangelism. It's something good that we need to use in our own life when we're struggling. My, my grandmother just passed away last week, and I was, again, thinking about, thinking about uh, the sting of death is sin, and, and, and the sting of sin is death. And, and every time someone passes away in our, in our, in our lives, we, we relive this reality that we are dying. And so this encourages us. This encourages us that we have hope. The next thing I want to look at here is this, this idea of uh, in the, so we have this second, if, if we're just to summarize this here, we could just say this is a declaration. Paul is declaring uh, that he is, he is uh, confident in the gospel. He's pr proud of the gospel. He's not ashamed of the gospel, okay? And then what we're going to have here is this explanation. We were asking the question, why? Why is Paul confident in the gospel? Bake. We have this word here, it. It is simply renaming gospel. So for it, for the gospel, for the gospel. So it hasn't changed. Uh, in your Bible, in your notes, I would, I would just restate this. Gospel. For it for the gospel is the power of God is the power of God we're gonna look at this for what what is it the power of God for salvation so it's the power of God for salvation let's stop and think about that for a second does someone want to make a comment in Paul, who wrote this one, he himself has experienced the power of God on his way to Syria. Was it to Damascus? Yes. On his way to Damascus, he met Christ there. Can, can I can I write this down? Let, let, let's write this down. So let's let's make a comment here. Let's let's make a comment here. So what Henry is saying is a great observation. Paul experienced. God's power. Great. Continue, Henry. He experienced God's power on his way to Damascus. Eventually, he uh, uh, God sent. Uh, he was blinded, then God sent. Uh, what's that? Ananias. Yeah. To open his eyes. So there, uh, even 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 when he was uh, in that road, he heard. A voice from heaven he heard a voice from heaven that says to him now why are you persecuting me it's clearly he heard directly from God speaking to him so it's Jesus Christ yes because it said why are you persecuting me so that moment his life was changed or yeah transformed no, that is a great observation. Paul experienced the power, and it changed him. What you're saying is so important. We cannot have this experience. We cannot have this experience and not be transformed. And, and, and when we're sharing the gospel, so this is something to think about. If you're discipling someone, if you're explaining to them, and they're not understanding 
then they're not ready yet to receive it. If they do not understand the gospel, when someone understands the gospel, it transforms their thinking. Like Paul, it's like, it's like you were blind and now I see, right? And so think about when someone, if you're sharing the gospel and, and they're not really understanding or they're slowly coming to understanding, sometimes it's good. And, and the, the, the issue is they're not ready to commit, Viva. Uh, other times, people don't understand yet. When we come to an understanding, we understand, okay? And so what Henry is highlighting here is really important, that, that we experience the power of God, and, the, and it changes our lives, okay? Um, let's just add one more here, okay? We have in Romans, Romans, uh, uh, Romans 1, 4, right? God's power transformed Jesus. <laughs> Right. That's the power we're talking about. We're talking about resurrection power. And this is, this is, this resurrection power, Manga Kapitid, is not the old creation it's the new creation it's the new man okay it's the new creation it's the new man okay competent you want to say something go ahead okay that new creation that creation when jesus christ raised from the dead he has that body which doesn't uh it's uh it's the body that doesn't deteriorate and it has power the power that he, he, it's in that power the explanation is find uh, is found in hebrews chapter 1 verse 4 yeah. oh chapter 1 verse 3 towards the end of verse 3 he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. So that power Jesus has is the absolute, uh, ultimate power. Yeah. God the Father given it to him. Yeah. So, exactly. So this is, so let's talk about this. Let's, let's when we talk about new creation or the, the, the power of God, there's, the, the, the power is both, it's, it's a full transformation of our beings we're called new creations your homework you're going to see new creation okay your homework will have new creation okay so i'm giving you a hint to the to the to the homework okay new creation has a spiritual component the soul component a new soul or a new spirit there's debate but i just uh, there's that that internal and then there's the physical right now we do not have the physical but we have the spiritual okay but it's that new uh, the heavenly, the heavenly, the, the incorruptible, the eternal, uh, um, the, the eternal, what, what exists eternally, okay? Um, it's not part of this old system that's dying and death and decay, okay? So there's really, we can speak of, for, for us, um, spiritual and then one day physical. Spiritual and then one day physical. So we are now born again. That's the spiritual. One day we will be born again physically. That's the, the, the new resurrection like Jesus. Okay. Great. Great. Now let's 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 just highlight this salvation. Okay. Let's just highlight the salvation here. And we're moving along. What time is it? It's, it's, we still have about a half an hour, so we're okay so far on time. So if I were to say to you, what does salvation mean what does salvation mean can you give me a definition of salvation you, you don't unless you when you go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, to say it uh, directly if you die right now you'll be in heaven that means 
being saved, if you die right now, you're in heaven, then you are saved. Yes, good, 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 good. That's 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 good. So, so we we could define this as uh, I'll just make maybe that well, exactly what pa Pastor Jerry is saying is correct. But let's just uh, I'm just going to reword it so it's a, it's a little uh, uh, it's clear. Not that if you, what you're saying, Pastor Jerry, is not clear, but that it's it's connected with this other term terminology of death. Okay, so it's uh, deliverance, uh, deliverance. from uh, impending death. So you are correct. You, we, we will be in heaven, okay? Now that's, that's conditioned upon if we are, will be in heaven if we are trusting in Jesus Christ. But that's what salvation means, deliverance from impending death. Now this is both uh, a physical... And also spiritual, Diba. There's a physical death and an eternal death. In Revelation, we talk about the second death, okay? So when Paul says it is the power of God for salvation, salvation is referring to both from physical death and spiritual or eternal death separation from God forever, okay? There's two components there, okay? So the good news is both. The good news is both. Okay, now let's let's look at um, uh, let's first look at uh, what are we being saved from. Okay, so let's first ask the question: What are we being saved from? Diba. Now, of course, we could say death. But why is there death? Uh, what, what, what are we being saved from? Okay, so let's 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 look at just a couple passages here. I'm just going to highlight a couple passages. Uh, we're not going to spend a long time on them. Let's go down to verse 18. So just in the next, just in the next verse, verse 18. After he says that the just shall live by faith, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man or men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. So if we were to ask the question, what are we being saved from? It, you would miss the point to say, you would miss the point to say, well, you're being saved from death. <laughs> That's part of it. But what is, what precisely are, are, is, is, is bringing the death? What is it that's coming that we are being saved from? Death misses the point. That's part of it. But fundamentally, it's wrath of God. Pastor. Wrath of God. Wrath of God. Wrath of God. Yes. This is hard, but when you're sharing the gospel, we are being saved from the wrath of God. So let's, we have Romans 1, 18. Now, if you notice, I am, most of our references are coming from Romans, okay? Uh, that's by design, and it's going to be easy for you. Let's go to several other passages really quick, just to really emphasize this. Just to really emphasize this. Romans 3, Romans 6, <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there. Pastor Jerry's sneak attack. Oh, it's good. It's good. Okay. Great. Great. I really, this, this, is, this is good. Um, let's go to Romans chapter 2 in verses, in verses 4 to 5. Again, this is, this is uh, let's just go, we're gonna, I'm going to read verses 4 to 11. This is very clear. Again, very concise, very clear, okay? Uh, or do you presume, or are you taking advantage of the riches of his kindness, his forbearance, that's long-suffering, and patience, not knowing that it's God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? But because of your hard and unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath, 
when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. Okay? So, so physical death, it's part of the curse, but that's inconsequential. We should not be afraid of physical death. That is peanuts compared to this final day of wrath. Okay? It's like, it's, like a, it's, like, it's like a storehouse that's being filled up, and at one point it just bursts, and the wrath just comes on the scene. It just, it just, just fills the room. He will render to each one of us according to his works. To those who by patient and well-doing seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking, and that's the key, People will say, oh, I'm a good person, you know, this or that, 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 that. Self-seeking. Very hard to get around. We're very selfish. That's a heart issue. That's not a good works issue. That's internal. Those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness, there will be wrath and fury. There will be tribulation and distress. For every human who does evil, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So this is what's coming. This is what's coming for us, okay? Let's go to one last passage. So we have uh, Romans 1, 18, Romans 2, 4 to 11, and then we have Romans chapter 5, verse 9, okay? Now we're getting into what's being offered to us, but I want us to, I want us to see this, okay? This is... This is critical here, okay? Verse 9. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved. <laughs> so this here is salvation. Much more will we, we be saved from what? Wrath of God. Salvation. Wrath of God, or we could say deliverance. Any question or comment? So, Tim, yes, we've been ahead. talking about the wrath of God, we see from the wrath of God. Now, the wrath of God, does it refer to what particular uh, judgment? Does it referring, does it refer to uh, saving us from, from hell, from, you know, lake of fire? Are you referring to that? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's two. The wrath of God is being revealed in Romans chapter 1, and this is going a little deep. So anyone else who is listening, this is not required. This is, this is already entering into master's level deep theology. But there's two components of the wrath. In Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 32, the wrath is already being revealed, and it's being revealed in God turning people over and actually withholding light from them. And so they're actually being turned over to their own devices, to their own sin, to their own mm -hmm. lust. And that is a form of God's wrath. He's, God's grace is giving himself to us. By God withholding himself from us, that's actually the worst. That is the worst because he is the life giver. He is the life sustainer. By him giving us over to our own devices, that's one of the worst things he can do. Okay, so that's one component of the wrath of God. Pastor Jerry, but then the other component is the other combination. The other component is what you were saying. It's that final judgment. So uh, Romans uh, two verses four to eleven is referring to that final judgment, where then we will be, we will be, we will be uh, put in the lake of fire. That is correct. Um, and again, here uh, we'll be saved. Much more shall we be saved. Future tense from the wrath of God. That's the again the final wrath that God's going to pour out. Um, now in R Romans, Pastor Jerry, it's primarily in the final judgment day when everyone stands and the books are open, okay? But, but in that final judgment day, there is that component in Revelation where the wrath is being poured out physically upon the earth. And then again, the wrath will be poured out in, in, the, uh, in the lake of fire. So, I mean, I guess there's three components to it. I don't know if that answers. And we consider the COVID-19 as part of God's wrath? Well, so it, so it, so it, de it depends on how you interpret Revelation. <laughs> um, 
but but there are interpretations for sure that would say yes this is part of 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 god's pouring out of judgments for 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 man's sinfulness um and so uh uh you know that that could be that i mean anytime there's anytime there's a natural calamity every time there's pestilence or disease we are to view that as from the hand of god and it's the pestilence the disease is a sign of the curse so yeah. in a sense absolutely i would say yes we could consider covid-19 yeah. as part of god's judgment because it's part the something is the something is uh no one is exempted both believers and unbelievers suffer yeah and and actually actually and that's that's that the that's actually a theme in the old testament right the, the righteous yeah. remnant suffers with the <laughs> the group of israel the righteous remnant goes into exile with israel they both experience but but the promise is the spiritual protection the promise yeah. is the protection so yes yes and no but like uh noah right he they noah has to go through the flood <laughs> but he is protected so um anyway that's that's maybe beyond it's very good we should discuss that more maybe later uh good, good observation um any other comments or or questions okay good let's just let's just summarize here really quick so what i want us to look here is uh So the wrath of God is what we're being saved from. So when we offer people for salvation, now I want to be clear. It is true, it is true, Manga Kapitid, that when we are saved, when we receive salvation, we go to heaven to be with God. That's a benefit, okay? But when we're speaking in the technical sense of salvation, you're being delivered. It's a deliverance, and it's from this impending death which is both physical and spiritual. And that death is because of the wrath of God. God must punish sin. Okay? So it's critical that people understand that what we're being saved from is the wrath of God for, for the sin of mankind. Okay? Someone wants to make a comment or question? I do have one other passage, but it's we're, we're running out of time. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me just, in, in the... Uh, in, in the assignment, you're going to be looking at, in the assignment, you're going to be looking at Romans, Romans uh, 3, 10 to 12, and verse 20, okay? And you will be asked questions on this. So my question is, I'll just put here. What is the condition of man? So these are all connected. This gets to the heart. Uh, this passage here clearly defines man's condition. If someone wants to say they're good or they're pure. This gets to the heart. So we have two ideas here, two concepts here, okay? That we've just looked at. We've looked at, we've highlighted what salvation is and also what good news is, okay? All right, let's continue on here. Just briefly, I do want to pick up. So the author is going, uh, I team is going to talk about uh, who is god okay who is god this is part of the gospel okay we need to share with people who god is okay now i um i just want to highlight let's just go to uh, one passage of scripture because we've already talked about who god is in romans chapter 2 verses 4 to 11 so let's just go to one other passage of scripture this is going back to romans chapter uh romans chapter one Romans chapter one in verse uh, nineteen. Okay, so when we talk about again Christianity one hundred and one, who is God? We do need to highlight who God is. Okay, so I'm just going to give you two uh, two concepts of who God is, 
And I'm, I'm focusing right now specifically on God the Father, okay? So, so um, we're not talking about Trinity right now. We're just focusing on God the Father, okay? Verse 19, for what can be known about God is plain to them. So this is, the, this is the unrighteous men that are suppressing the truth, okay? What can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. What has God shown to mankind? For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power. So this is the power. This is the power that we are talking about. God has shown man his eternal power and his divine nature having been clearly seen ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So creation is testifying to the power and divine nature of God. Okay, so we can say he is the e eternally powerful creator. Eternally powerful creator, okay? But although they knew God, they did not honor God as God or give thanks to him. They became uh, futile in their thinking. It's like worthless, like their thinking is so messed up. They became claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, birds, animals, creepy things. Therefore God gave them up in their lusts for their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. <laughs> so who is God? Who is this God that we're, that we are going to give an account to? He is, According to Romans 1, 19 to 25, he is the creator. Who is invisible. And has eternal power. To be worshipped. Okay? This is who God is. I team will give you other passages, but this is very clear. Again, I'm offering a I'm offering uh, one one uh, one location, Romans, okay? The other thing that I want us to draw your attention to is that. God is also, based upon these references, God is the judge. God is the judge. One, two. God is the judge. Because we can say, you, people can say, oh, well, God's, God, you know, da, 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 uh, yeah, God is creator. I, I respect him as creator. He's the judge. You're going to give an account. You're going to give an account to the judge. You're going to give an account to the judge. And this is what creates the need when we're sharing the gospel. No, 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 no. You're going to give an account for every deed that you've done in the mind, in the heart, in your actions, where, 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 where you're seen, where you're not seen, okay? This is who God is. Um, in, in Romans chapter 1, from verse 18 to, uh, I mean, 32? Yeah, 32. Yeah. Where it says, God, God gave them up. God did. So it seems that God is democratic, although he's powerful, but he gives, his, because if God gave them up, give up by and alone. So, Although he's powerful, but he's not a dictator. He gives us free will to make choices. Yes, so 
in, in, in uh, Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 32, it's very clear. He gives, he says, you want that? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, and, and for sure with Adam, right? He gave Adam, he gave Adam, he gave Adam the choice. And then Adam chose, and because Adam chose, he had to, he had to separate himself from him. That's a good observation. And, and, and Pastor Jerry, that's a scary place to be in, the Bible, when God gives you up. When God gives you up, that's a scary place to yes. be. That's right. <laughs> Very scary. Any other comments or questions? Go ahead, ask a question. The rejection of Jesus Christ is the great grievous sin of man. Is the great? Is the gravest or gravest, uh, the greatest sin? Yeah. The rejection, uh, yeah. rejection of Christ is the, the greatest sin of all or just sin are just the same? Oh, where well, are you saying you're saying when God rejected Christ? No, when man, if man rejected Christ, the sin, the sin oh, of yeah. rejection, man rejection, uh, rejecting Jesus Christ. The greatest that's sin. That's the, the greatest sin. Yeah, yes, yes. So, so no, that's a great point. That that's a great point because in 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 Jesus's preaching, the Bible. He talks about how he talks about how he talks about how um, uh, if the works had been done in best day, had been done in Sodom and Gomorrah that were done here they would have repented um, well into best day and course and so you're absolutely right the great the greatest sin in the history of the world is reject is rejecting Jesus Christ because you have been given all of this and you you've rejected him. And actually, it's in the context of the church also, Pastor. Those who are in the church and reject Christ, they leave the church, and they, they show themselves not to be real believers. That is the absolute greatest. That is the greatest. They, they, uh, Hebrews talks about they've tasted the heavenly gift. They partook. They, they, they've, they've, they've seen the, the powers that are to come, and then they put him to open shame. Excellent point, Henry. Excellent point. Let, let's just be clear. It, it's sometimes in in uh, the curriculum we might go over, and then sometimes we might go faster. So so we are going to be a little bit behind. But as Henry had said, um, uh, these things it's a process. I don't want to rush through this. I want I really want you to to learn, and this will be good because you can go ahead and do the homework. We can discuss next week. So yeah. um, it's not a hard and fast. It's not a hard and fast. And um, my primary desire is that we really understand what has been provided for us in the gospel. I mean, right now, uh, lesson chapter one is the greatest, most foundational uh, foundation for us. And so we cannot, we cannot short circuit this. So I'm going to take Henry's advice. God will, what's he saying here? God will punish. Yeah. Uh, because the, the, the student in this class, the student in this class, eventually, they will be the mentor. Yes. Yes. So if, if they did not get it clear, clearly or understand it clearly in all what we are, uh, all these uh, lessons, then it will be diluted on yes. the next generation. Tama, Tama. No, excellent, excellent point. And, and that's actually really accurate. Uh, you will be teaching this. So we, th of all the things that you're teaching, of course, Sunday school is important, but this, <laughs> if we get the gospel wrong, if we short circuit this, uh, this is the, if, Diba, Henry, if we do not allow, if we do not properly lay the foundation on a, a proper, a proper bedrock using the proper, cement mixture with 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 rebar cyan so this is this is our foundation so let's let's take two weeks to do chapter number one and um maybe even christianity 101 might be extended a little bit because of the details here but this you will be teaching this and so we cannot search anything so let's let's close in prayer um pastor henry can you close us in prayer and we will be uh dismissed for those who need information or want to stay back and talk huh? 
we don't, but once after we pray, you can you can disconnect. So, Pastor, go ahead. Let's pray. Father God, uh, salamat sa inyagapi. It's exciting to review again and get the real, uh, the real uh, in meaning of salvation. Thank you, Father, that you have refreshed our mind and understanding that you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, and you have revealed that your Son uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Father, in we don't want to to make this uh, light in our knowledge and in our in belief. Father, in thank you for uh, giving us the team and the uh, Pastor Jerry, uh, June, and the leaders to be hearer and doers of your of your work. Uh, Father, may you bless us tonight as you dismiss us. May we continue to learn as we as we do a, a small group session so that we can slowly apply it in our mind, heart, and hand. In, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Really quick before everyone goes, I need a request from everyone, okay? Everyone has some form of everyone probably has Facebook, Diba. Um, sometime this week, just I know Pastor Henry will be keeping and others will be keeping track of attendance, but if you can save, save me a pri send me a private Facebook message, just introducing yourself, we can become friends, and then give me your full name and then your nickname and just say, I attended the class. So for my records, but I'll have, I'll have your, your, your names for my record book, okay? And I also want, I want to have your, I want to be friends with you on Facebook. I can put you in the, in the, in the group page. Uh, the group, uh, and then I can also learn your faces because I really want to learn people's names and faces. And the only way is Facebook, but there are so many of you, and my brain is so small. So just uh, e send me a Facebook message. Hi, hi, brother Tim. Uh, my name is such and such. I attended the class. I'm with such and such church. So just give me your your name, your nickname, and then also the church you're you're connected with. Okay. And, and then I, I'll have your, we can become friends, okay? So everyone, please do that sometime this week, okay? And then I, we can uh, progress. And eventually I want to, we, we, we really need to, I want to become good at all your names. And one day you'll all be participating. I want you all to be participating. So, uh, all right, we're dismissed.